It's time for episode three of Cover to Cover. By now you probably know what this series entails, but if not, then I will link episode one up here, which gives a bit more detail than I'm about to go into. This series is all about the search for the best indie bookshop. I'm going to a different independent bookshop every single month, which is a great time. I'm seeing so many new bookshops, and I am rating those bookshops based on the atmosphere, the staff recommendations, the book selection, shop layout, and a further five bonus points are available, based on the rating that I give the book I buy in this bookshop from the staff recommendation. So where does episode three take us? To one of the most recommended or requested books for this video series, which is Burt's Books. <laughs> I did a Q&A on Instagram when I very first started this series to gauge where people would most like me to visit and Burt's Books came up the most and people have said about it to me since. And I think it's for good reason. This bookshop is very well known for being quite fun and witty online. Their Twitter is a great time to be on and it just makes them feel so personal. They actually started as an online bookshop initially but now they have a base in Swindon. So that's where I'm gonna be heading today. This bookshop really centers itself around recommendations from the looks of it. There is a monthly book bundle that you can get that I'm very intrigued by. And also they say that there's a personal touch to their shop, so I'm really interested to see what kind of a book I walk out of here with. Now I used to work in Swindon, Swindon is not that far from me, and I've never been in this bookshop before, so I'm really excited to go in and see. I don't know why I've not been in it, it seems like a crime up until this point, but today I am amending that. Their Twitter bio says they offer free delivery services across the UK, so if you're looking for a new indie to be able to support online, Burt's Books could be your shop. Usually I go in with a rough idea of what kind of a book I'm looking for to be recommended, but today I'm honestly not sure. I think I'm definitely craving something fun and easy, something that doesn't take itself too seriously, but I feel like based on what I can see online about Burt's Books and their personal touch and the way that they recommend books, I feel like this is going to be the perfect place to go when I'm not 100% sure what it is I want to read. So let's go to Burt's Books. <laughs> was such a nice bookshop. I'm gonna tell you properly about it when I get back, but I loved it. Okay, that is me back from Burt's Books in Swindon. That was such a lovely bookshop. Also, I feel less bad about not having been before now that I know that it opened last May. So they're about to celebrate their one year anniversary, which is why I'd never gone in before because I have been working remote for quite a while. So that makes me feel a little bit better. I told myself I would only buy one book and I bought three. I don't know which one it is I'm gonna be reading for this video yet. So I'm gonna talk them through with you in a minute and then decide. But in terms of the ratings for this bookshop, this bookshop really impressed me so, so much. So let's talk about the atmosphere. So going in, there was very much a blue theme for this bookshop, which I loved. It felt very cool, very calming, 
and it made the room feel very spacious as well. So I really loved the colour scheme. I loved the fact that there was a bench along the side of the shop that allowed you to be able to sit while you were looking through the books that you picked out. You can have something from their little coffee cake area, which was really lovely as well. I did get myself a lemon drizzle cake whilst I sat and had a look at the books that I bought. And just generally, it felt like such a nice space. It felt like a really pleasant, light and airy environment. Also, there's a car park right next to it. Not that that contributes to the atmosphere, but like it's literally in the car park area. So that's really convenient as well. The children's section was this lovely like little cove. It felt like a really cozy little nook to be able to browse. And I know that I would have definitely enjoyed that as a child. So I generally, do you know, I cannot fault the atmosphere of the shop. I think I have to give it a five. It was a really lovely atmosphere. It just felt like a lovely calming environment. And I really Really enjoyed being in there and I didn't want to leave when my parking ran out. I, did, I didn't want to go. In terms of shop layout, it was a lovely big space. It felt very easy to be able to maneuver. There were no tight corners. It felt like you could get everywhere. It felt very accessible. And I was speaking to the owner about this and he was saying that was something he really wanted, that the space felt like you could get around and it wasn't too cramped. And I think it definitely did a brilliant job of that. The layout itself was very clear. There were tables in the middle, which I always love. I really like tables in the middle because when you're not really sure what you want and you can just browse the tables immediately, I think it makes the shopping experience a really great one. And then obviously there were the, the shelves. There was also some sections that were star favourites and some special and signed editions as well, which was really nice. I really love it when there's the personal elements of star favourites and things like that, which just help again with me picking books. And there was a little local nod section as well, which I think I've said before is one of the reasons I love indie bookshops so much. So for shop layout, Again, I can't fault it, it's a five. These are out of five, by the way. I don't think I actually explained in this video the rating system. Basically each category gets a rating out of five to be rated out of 20 in total with five bonus points for the book that I review that I purchased that I'll talk about in a minute. So we've got five and five <laughs> so far, atmosphere and shop layout, staff recommendations. So I went up to the till and said, I'm looking for some recommendations. I want something really fun and immediately there were so many books being shown to me and I just love that immediately. The booksellers were so knowledgeable but also they had different tastes which I really liked because I think that really helps cover for everybody and there were so many books that they were able to suggest to me and then once we honed in a little bit more and I said like more of what I was looking for they gave me even more recommendations and I had this stack that I was looking through to decide what I was buying from. Honestly, they knew so much. And I was talking about books that I'd previously enjoyed and was speaking about The Unlikely Escape of Raya Heap. And one of the booksellers had recently read and loved that. We were talking about the Cemetery of Forgotten Book series. Again, one of the booksellers had read and loved two of the books in that series. So I just, they, they knew a lot. They really did. And their recommendations were very thorough and going into depth of things that I said I wanted in the books. So guys, it's a five out of five. <laughs> for bookseller recommendations. Which leaves us with book selection. So when you go in, there were some tables and areas in front of you that were sci-fi, fantasy, YA, and then thrillery kind of books. And then on the left, there was fiction. There was a section of like popular books. There was a children's section. There was, as I said, star favourites, local books. There were so many books. There were also some indie books in there as well, some indie publishers. There was such an array. There were books I had heard of, a lot of books I hadn't. Like, it, it was a really great mix. Can you tell where this is going? It's a five out of five for the book selection. I literally can't fault, I don't wanna fault any of these bookshops. Like, I literally can't fault this bookshop. It, it had everything. If I break it all down separately, it had it all, and I put it all together, it was a great bookshop. So that does mean Burt's Books is sitting at 20 out of 20 at the moment which hasn't happened yet, episode three, and we've had a full marker. I do say every time, I'm just doing this for fun. What I want this series to do is highlight a love of independent bookshops and just generally a love of, of books and shopping in bookshops. That's the point of this. The ratings thing is just for fun. So I'm not taking it too seriously and I don't ever want any bookshop obviously to receive low ratings because I want to highlight every bookshop really positively. So this this is just for fun, but saying that we haven't had a full mark yet. So 20 out of 20. This could all change because I have got some books to read. Well, I'm gonna read one of these books in this video. The next part of this video will be a vlog, but I bought three books. The book that I pick to read, whatever rating I give that will be the final bonus points to see what this bookshop comes out as. I think we've had a 20.5 and a 19.5 maybe, I think for, the first two bookshops that I went to, which is Blue Bear Bookshop and Pigeon Books. So this already, unless this book gets 0.5 stars, I'm gonna say Burt's Books is probably in the lead. So 
I got three books. The first book that I bought was one that I've been wanting to pick up for a while, but the booksellers kind of reaffirmed that I, I should pick this book up. This is The Air Affair by Jasper Ford. I have heard about this from my friend Immy from Mythic Reader, who is usually on these video in these videos with me to go to these bookshops. Immy has said how fantastic this is many, many times to me. So I, I really wanted to pick it up. And I saw it under the star favourite section and thought, it's uh, what what better time? And then I was chatting to the booksellers about it. This is set in an alternate version of Swindon, which is where the bookshop is. So I didn't know that. The blurb does not indicate this. So to have bought it in Swindon when it's set in an alternate version of Swindon feels pretty perfect. Meet Thursday next, literary detective without equal fear or boyfriend. There is another 1985 where London's criminal gangs have moved into the lucrative literary market, and Thursday next is on the trail of the new crime waves Mr. Big. Archeron Hades has been kidnapping characters from works of fiction and holding them to ransom. Jane Eyre is gone missing. Thursday sets out to find a way into the book to repair the damage, but solving crimes against literature isn't easy when you also have to find time to halt the Crimean War, persuade the man you love to marry you, and figure out who really wrote Shakespeare's plays. Perhaps today just isn't going to be Thursday's day. Join her on a truly breathtaking adventure and find out for yourself. Fiction will never be the same again. This sounds so unique and brilliant, so I'm really excited to read this one. This, that is definitely not one of the ones I'll be reading this video. This is going to be one that I'm reading this weekend I think for Easter weekend because I'm filming this video a little bit early at the moment but these other two are the ones that I'm going to be picking for to read in this video. So the very first book that I actually got recommended when I said I was looking for something fun is Not Working by Lisa Owens. This cover immediately drew me in. I just I really love the simplicity of it and I love that on the coffee cup here it says to do quit job find purpose and panic. Find purpose has been <laughs> completely crossed out, quit job has been ticked off and panic has been underlined. It just looks damn relatable and good. Now and again we all lie awake wondering what on earth we're doing with our lives, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Claire Flannery has had more than a few sleepless nights lately. Maybe she shouldn't have walked out on her job with no idea what to do next. Maybe she should think before she speaks and maybe her mother will start returning her calls. Maybe she should be spending more time going to art galleries or reading up on current affairs and less time in her pajamas, entering competitions on the internet. Then again, maybe the perfect solution to life's problems only arises when you stop looking for it. One of the reviews, and I think this is partially what sold it as well as the bookseller recommendation, is imagine the diaries of Adrian Mole as written by the love child of Bridget Jones and Dorothy Parker. It sold me. I think it looks great. It looks relatable when you've just kind of got that feeling of ah. So yeah, this is one of the ones I might read in this video. I honestly, I don't know which one to pick between. I don't know how to decide because I want to start one now. The other book in consideration is Changeling by Matt Wazolski. This one sounds very interesting, a little bit different. It kind of gave me Only Murderers in the Buildings vibe a little bit, if you've watched that fantastic show. I definitely think this one sounds quite different and quite gripping. The Front of it says a missing child, a family in denial, six witnesses, six stories, which one is true? All the re all the reviews and the blurbs on this say that it is terrifying and chilling. The bookseller gave it a very high recommendation, so I'll, I'll read you the blurb. On Christmas Eve in 1988, seven-year-old Alfie Marsden vanished in the dark Wentshire Forest Pass when his father Sorrel stops the car to investigate a mysterious knocking sound. No trace of the child nor his remains have ever been found. Alfie Marsden was officially de declared dead in 1995. Elusive online journalist Scott King, whose Six Stories podcast has become an internet sensation, investigates the disappearance, interviewing six witnesses, including Sorrel and his ex-partner, to try to find out what really happened that fateful night. Journeying through the trees of Wentshire Forest, a place synonymous with strange sightings and tales of hidden folk who dwell there, he talks to a company that tried and failed to build in a development in the forest, and a psychic who claims to know what really happened to the little boy. Intensely dark, deeply chilling, and searingly thought-provoking, Changeling is an up-to-the-minute startling thriller taking you to places you will never ever forget. I did say I wanted something easy and fun which would be this one, however I did start this one whilst I was having a little lemon drizzle cake when I was in the bookshop and this is very intriguing as well and I really like the format of this, this kind of goes between, I think going between being a podcast rec recording and a narrative? I don't really know, I'm trying to find you an example but it's yeah, there's like audio extracts here and then there's bits here. Like, I'm not really sure. The format looks interesting and I think that could probably sway the pacing. I honestly, I don't know. They're very similar in length. I do want to be able to read this over the next few days. So that is something I'm thinking about too. I don't know. The Guardian says this is very funny, hugely enjoyable, utterly addictive, a gem, superbly written, laugh out loud, funny. Like, those are good reviews. I mean, this also has good reviews, but it's 
it's a totally different vibe. It's a chilling read. I found myself gripping the pages tightly as I read. One of the most imaginative and talented young writers out there. I don't know which one to read. I might take some time looking at the Goodreads pages for both of these and pick which one to read next. Obviously I'm gonna read them both, but for this video, I read one and then I give you the review for that. And that is the extra bonus points obviously for the bookshop. So I feel the pressure, man, I feel the pressure. I'm gonna go have some lunch now and then hopefully start one of these books later. I'm re-watching The Walking Dead at the moment and it's consuming everything in me. So I need to be careful not to accidentally start binging that. I might allow myself one episode with lunch because I'm just about to start season three again. So I might allow myself one episode with lunch because yeah, you can really just do one episode of The Walking Dead. You can't. And then I'm gonna pick which book to start. That's the plan. Hello, when of last you joined me, I was going to start this book and we were currently seeing Bert's books sitting with a 20 out of 20 score for episode three of Cover to Cover. I have now finished this book and can reveal my rating in a minute. Changing by Matt Wazalowski was a very interesting true crime fiction. It follows our main character who is creating a podcast centered around a missing young boy as he tries to get to the bottom of what actually happened. Over the course of this podcast, he meets six different people whom he interviews to form the overall story to piece together what happened to this young boy. I really enjoyed the format of this and how you knew that there was this set structure, but you didn't know what direction it was going to take. I enjoyed the way that the narrator became so captivated by this story themselves and so emotionally invested in it and wanted to know where it was going and I think that that made me as a reader feel even more invested. This was very intriguing. The different characters interviewed were really interesting choices as well and I think altogether it knitted together very cleverly to create something that was not only full of suspense and intrigue but also full of emotion and, and raw feeling to do with everything that got the characters to the point where they're at when they're being interviewed by our narrator. I think I said when I was first talking about this book in the video that it was, it gave me only murderers in the building vibe. It doesn't really give me that vibe anymore. This is not at all comic and I didn't expect it to be. This is very serious. It does feel like a real life crime incident that we're looking back on a cold case. And I think again, that is a great testament to how involved this book makes you feel as a reader. And because of the format of it, it is mainly centric just around these podcast episodes and following various different encounters that our main character has with other people linking towards this case as well. So it's not really told in a normal structure or not the structure's not the same. The kind of, the way that the narrative comes across is not really the way that you'd be used to with this kind of thing. So I think that that did a really good job of, of keeping me hooked and entertained. So the important part, what did I rate this book? Burt's Books is currently sat at 20 out of 25 points with the remaining five up for grabs with my rating for Changeling. And I gave this book four out of five stars, which puts Burt's Books at 24 out of 25 total points. So Burt's Books are officially in the lead for cover to cover, three episodes in. They are one point away from a full score. As I've said in pretty much every single clip, the scoring is just for fun. This is just to add a little something else into this video. It doesn't mean anything. Obviously all of these bookshops are amazing. And if you ever have the opportunity to visit any of them, you absolutely should. But Burt's Books, yeah, high, high scorer. I also just wanted to show you a book that I picked up over the weekend. I was at a National Trust property and there's a secondhand bookshop there. Now, when I was in Burt's Books, I got recommended this as one of the ones that I was told I would enjoy, but I didn't end up picking this up. I instead picked up The Air Affair, which I have also now read and really enjoyed that. This is the same author, Jasper Ford, and this is Shades of Grey. Now, I was recommended this one as being completely, utterly bizarre and there wasn't anything quite like it. I'd never heard of this before. And then I was in the National Trust bookshop at the weekend and this was there. So I felt like that was kind of fated. So I picked up a copy of this, even though I didn't pick it up at the time that I saw it in Burt's Books. I like it when you get a little moment like that. I wouldn't have known about it had I not have gone into Burt's Books and bought the other book by Jasper Ford. So that is it for episode three of Cover to Cover. I really hope that you're enjoying this series. I'm having a great time filming it. I'm really looking forward to episode four. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any bookshops you'd like to see me visit. Obviously I am kind of going within a big wide circle of my local area, but I'd love to know what you would suggest as well. You can also subscribe to see more of my face on your feed and at link down below, you will find my Patreon and my online shop. Thank you so much for watching, keep smiling and stay positive.